medium, medium, long, short, short. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have your knuckle and fingertips, and then you have pins. Fingers take on new meaning for eighth graders in Chagrin Falls Exempted Village Schools Innovation Center. It's really interesting how we can create like a prosthetic hand. Like you would never think of like a traditional eighth grader to be able to do something like that. These parts will eventually become the prototype of a mechanical hand for a volunteer community called Enable. Enable distributes hands to people in need across the globe. The vital tool for phase one is getting the parts to print accurately on a 3D printer. Yeah, just add in the comments kind of what pieces you're trying to make so that we don't have three of one piece, you know, being made. Students note on Google Classroom which files they are downloading of the 30 plus parts from Enable. So the STL files is what the 3D printer knows what to print. Uh, the images just let you see what the image is actually going to look like. Okay. Um, go ahead and add, add a few more of them. I was taking an STL file, which is basically a draft version of a 3D object, and turning it into a G-code, which is like the final version of a 3D object, and putting it onto a printer, which will then print that G-code. We look at the design process as a way for the kids to learn how engineers think and how they work through a, a model. The students chose this project, among others, for their Forces in Motion unit. The purpose is to learn about different technology and how they can make a difference working with it. This could be something that the, that the children never forget. Like I actually was able to build something in school that, you know, that a, that a child was able to use for a few years. You know, a child that obviously doesn't have the use of, of a hand. We don't know if this is going to work. We hope it is. But if it doesn't, we'll learn from the mistakes and we'll, you know, grow that way too. Okay, there we go. A month later and it's build time with several hands in construction. Here's like a basic build plate with a lot of pieces and pins. Kind of here but now I can't get it through. Building the hand to function with just the right amount of tension is tricky. There are strings that run through the hand and into this little compartment thing here that and um, they're like tight I guess and then um, when you move your like palm or wrist down the fingers will kind of move with it which will be able to pick up objects. As students struggle with the flexible cord they are humbled to watch a video of a person with one hand doing the job. It's kind of mind-blowing because it's like it's already hard enough for yeah, us. Yeah it's already like together hard enough for us to understand it and to be able to like build something like this and I can't imagine someone with one hand like building their other hand. Throughout the process they have worked together through challenges hoping that one of their hands will work for someone in need. It has to be really hot for it to print. It's at 220 degrees Celsius right now and sometimes it will just stop heating at random points in time. A lot of this can look overwhelming um, but once you start doing it and learn, um, it becomes that much easier for them. Um, and that's really the, the cool part of it. So it makes them less afraid uh, to even try something. So it really has to go through that part. Okay. We'll send them to um, who the donation's going to go through. They'll check out the hand, make sure that we did a good job of, of building it. Um, hopefully they say we did. Uh, if not, we can make some adjustments and, you know, go from there. I'm sure whoever gets it is going to be really thankful and I'm sure it'll help them a lot. So. It's always good to help people who need it.